All right, guys, we have a bombshell sponsor. I would like to thank Bob and Brad for sponsoring today's video. This has been my saving grace. I couldn't even wait to unbox this with you guys, y'all. I have literally been using this for the last few hours because I've been so tense from editing. Let me give you a little bit more detail about this amazing back and neck massager. This is the heated back and neck massager. It also has a charging port on the back. And guys, on the back, we actually have the power button right here. So basically, you just press and hold it. Now guys, when you press and hold the power button, you see that the massaging mechanisms, they heat up in red. I hope that you guys can see that. If you don't want the massage to be heated, all you're gonna do is go turn it over and then you are gonna press and hold it until the button is blue. If you guys want a less intense massage, you can put the comfort pad on. This is how it's gonna look with the comfort pad. Another thing that I wanted to tell you about this massager, guys, this is something that you could actually take in the office. And so for some of those more high stress days and things get a little bit tense, you can actually use this. I also love it because like I said earlier, it does heat up. So not only are you getting a nice deep tissue massage, you're getting the warmth as well. Guys, this thing works wonders. I have literally been over here using this for the last few hours. And when I tell y'all, I feel so relieved. Girl, you have got to get one of these. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that I put everything in the description box below. You guys make sure that you click and you head over and get your device today. Once again, I would like to thank Bob and Brad for sponsoring today's video. Hey girls, uh, we are getting ready to go over to the hospital to visit my sister. She's doing good. Um, she's stable, and but they just want to watch her. So we're getting ready to do that. I hope y'all can see me okay. So we're about to do that. And then um, when we leave there, we're probably going to go over to the outlet because she's not that far from the outlet. But we're only going to run over to uh, the company cosmetic store because I wanted to see if they had um, a few things that I need. Need Like I need some uh, eye cream and, you know, just little stuff like that. But anyway, I dropped a blog today and you girls are being so receptive about this blog and i really love it um y'all are chiming in about the conversation about weight and you know some of your experiences with being you know a slimmer bombshell and you know just some of the things that people have said to you about your weight and stuff like that so you guys are so supportive and i appreciate it um another thing that y'all are chiming in about is saving okay and so i mentioned in the blog like I just be feeling like, you know, when people talk about saving and stuff, like a lot, of, I just be feeling like a lot of people don't want to hear that because I think sometimes from my experiences, and this is with saving and this is with weight loss as well. People from my experiences, they only want to know, they don't want to know how, they don't want to do what you did to get there. They just want to get there. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to do the work. They just want the results. And you got to do the work. And so uh, my saving tip, the, the biggest strategy that worked for me, and I had I created this strategy, was basically like a, a rolling calendar saving plan. What I'm probably going to do is insert, uh, I'm probably going to do a screen record to show y'all what I'm talking about. So what I, the way that I save my money, uh, first of all, number one, guys, I've always been a saver. That's number one. I've never... I've never struggled with saving money. The way that I would save is pretty much like, um, so for example, in January, I would save $100. In February, I would save $200. In March, I would save $300. In uh, April, I would save $400. So whatever the month of the year was, whatever month it was, is the number of hundreds that I would save. And so for those months, like, you know, you have certain months of the year where you get paid. If you get paid every two weeks, it's certain months where you actually get paid uh, three times in one month. And I think September is one of those months. And I want to say May. I'm not, I can't remember. But anyway, so those months where I would get that extra paycheck, I would still save aggressively. 
You know, so say for example, in May, I knew all I had to save in May was $500. But what I would do in May, I would save $1,100 because I knew that those more aggressive months was coming up. So everything was good. Like it was easy to save into those, those really aggressive months. I ain't gonna lie, baby. Baby, when September, you, cause in September, you gotta save 900. October, you gotta save 1,000. November, you gotta save 1,100. In December, you gotta save 1,200. So those months, like I said, where those months where I knew that I would get those extra pay, pay periods, I would get super aggressive. That way, if I fell short, like say I fell short in the month of September, well, because I had already saved $1,100 in May, then that kind of balanced out if I was only able to save $700 in September. And so, y'all, that's how... I would say, but I would do a little bit more because as y'all know, I don't have kids and I got paid really, really well. And I, I, my overhead was extremely low. Like I had super, super low bills. You know, I kept my bills low. Um, my car was paid off and I didn't have a car note. And then my insurance on my car, even though it was paid off, my insurance was full coverage, but it was still cheap. So I was able to save really, really aggressively. And um, girl, before I knew it, I had saved like $18,000 in less than a year. Um, and then the year, a year prior to that, I had saved like $10,000, you know? And so that is my, that's my saving strategy. Well, now that I get paid differently, um, because I do work for myself, y'all, I literally just, when I get paid, because girl, we get paid all over the place. Some companies pay you every 30 days. Um, what I've noticed, like, for me, I ain't gonna lie, most of the companies I work with, y'all, I literally get paid that same night. Um, meaning, like, as soon as I do a hair sponsorship, or as soon as I do... Um, you know, whatever campaign, literally I send them the, the, the information and the video link and they literally pay me probably within two hours. And so because money is coming in like that, I save my money. Like I take that money, I transfer it from PayPal because most of these companies pay through PayPal. I transfer it immediately and I transfer it directly to my savings account. And then from there, I'm able to determine you know, uh, you know, what's going to be delegated to bills, what's going to be, um, you know, delegated towards savings and what's going to be delegated towards, you know, just doing other, other stuff right now. I'm not doing a lot of stuff. Like I'm not traveling and doing all of that stuff or whatever. Um, I don't know, um, what's going on with these companies, but what I'm running into is companies that's having like a really, really high demand on the turnover of uh of uh sponsorships and which i don't have a problem with because if they the being that they have a like oh can you do it like within three days that mean i'm gonna get paid in three days so girl i'll be turning on their sponsorships out baby but anyway um i just say you know like i said i save everything that i have i stop i don't travel i'm not traveling right now because i'm i'm putting um delayed gratification into play meaning like if i save now if i'm disciplined now if i continue to stay focused now continue to build relationships long-term relationships with these companies continue to leverage and, and negotiate higher and higher on each sponsorship and continue to save and be a good steward over my money and be steadfast and not blow my money i know that the time will come where I will be traveling more and doing more stuff. Another thing uh, for me uh, that I do like, that I love about myself is like, what's important to me guys is having a good credit score, having a beautiful place to live and having a lot of money in the bank. That's what's important to me. I just want like a gorgeous home to like decorate and put beautiful art in. That's what's important to me, you know? And so, um, Another thing, you know, like I will, you guys see me go to Ross and stuff every now and again, but uh, another thing that I do like about myself is the discipline that I have when I am going out to these stores. Um, either 
I'll set a budget for myself to go to these stores or either I will I will say okay I'm just going for this one thing and honestly that's contingent upon what's there when I get there so for example if I'm going to the store just to purchase candles then that's all I'm going to purchase but if I get to the store and I see that they have we'll just say maybe a shoe rack and I need a shoe rack well then instead of me just going for candles I'll take that restriction away and say okay well we're only budgeting for fifty dollars and once that fifty dollars is gone it's gone and that's just what it is and so um that's kind of how I remain disciplined and then another thing like I don't I don't necessarily go to like stores and stuff like that just to like go and look because that's what will get me in trouble. The bottom line is girls, y'all just save your money. I'm going to tell you, let me tell you something. The biggest flex is number one, having like being able to walk in any store in Houston, for example, literally walk in any store in Houston and be able to buy anything in that store, but have the discipline not to. That's like a flex. And then just being being disciplined. Like I, I didn't realize, like it's not a lot of people out here with financial discipline. It's not. And so um, when I do go out and I buy myself like little stuff or whatever, I be feeling excited and I be, I be feeling proud of myself because I know the sacrifices that I make, you know? Um, so yeah, those are just like, my saving savings tips and stuff like that let me finish my hair my makeup real quick and i guess my hair is done let me get dressed and then i'll probably just see you guys when we get in the car all right i had to get some lotion in i need to put on my earrings i just wanted to be really cute and put together uh but not like Y'all know I'm not not like super 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 glam or whatever. So I gotta remember to. Oh, this looks so cute. But yeah, girls. Um, I know the Bombshell headquarters is like not super tidy, but that's okay. We'll tidy up when we get back. Uh, so put my necklace on. It seems like you girls are really, really enjoying the blog. I'm always happy about that. I'm getting a lot of feedback about several conversations that we had in the blog. So I appreciate that. I just feel so proud of the community that we've built. You know, we're more than just, you know, an audience here. You know, I just feel like we really are a community you know what I'm saying? And I love that. Um, you know, one thing that I'm learning about is like just being a content creator. I'm just learning about different types of relationships and uh, just realizing like how much I value having a sense of community as opposed to transactional relationships, you know, um, and you know y'all know those transactional relationships of like you know you could be you could need a ride down the street and someone you know they're going the same way they're going to target you need a ride to target they're going to target but instead of them just saying yeah you can ride with me they're charging you twenty dollars to ride with them to go to Target where they were gonna go anyway. And so that's more of a transactional type of relationship. And I have absolutely had my fair share of those. And and I wasn't the one um, demanding the transaction. I was the one that the transactions was being demanded from. And those are the worst freaking relationships. And so I am so proud of how I have been able to be blessed oh uh -uh, this thing keeps snagging my hair but anyway i'm just very proud of how i've been able to be blessed with you guys um i see how y'all support each other in the comments section and that means so 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 much to me and i i, I love you guys and i'm so appreciative appreciative so i just wanted to uh say that oh oh not the necklace breaking uh-uh girl i'm done We'll fix that later. 
All right, let me at least, uh, let me change my purse out. Must have, must. Oh my God, y'all, 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 we growing, we growing, Gu guys. Guys, I need y'all to do me a big favor. I just looked at where we are, guys. We have 15,936 bombshells, guys. We almost have 16,000 bombshells, so we're absolutely on the road to 20,000. I'm sorry, I gotta get these pants to go. So if you guys could please look and see if you are subscribed because i know a lot of the girlies were telling me that uh they had they had subscribed and they were unsubscribed that's also happened to me with some of my favorite girlies that i love to watch i would be like where is my friend at and then i would literally have to type her name in and then youtube be like unsubscribe i'm like i did not i'm not no they would be like subscribe i'm like but i subscribed to her already so i have noticed that they for whatever reason will say that you're not subscribed to somebody and i'm like yes i am so if you guys can do me a favor and make sure that you are in fact subscribed i would appreciate it we're taking our inconspicuous camera with us so yes we're taking this that way you know we don't have the girls the girls minding our business they need to mind their business don't mind my business all righty let me just put the camera in its protective there we go all right girls this is our outfit it's nothing spectacular it's just this really cute silk top from express with a matching uh, well, satin top with a matching cami, a pair of cute jeans. These jeans are from River Island. And girl, just some little flip-flops. Nothing, nothing spectacular. And then we're wearing our really cute Kirk Geiger bag. This is such a cute bag. So yeah, girls, this is the look. But anyway, y'all, let me get me some sunglasses and I'll see you girls. Right, girls, y'all. Hold on. Y'all, oh, let me turn this down. I don't want y'all judging me. Y'all, I got a confession. Sometimes when I be driving, I be listening to Lil Dirk and I be listening to um, King Bun. And I be thinking I'm a thug sometimes when I drive. I just be imagining myself like driving through the streets of Chicago. You know what I'm saying? Picking up drops. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Baby, I'm a whole thug in my head when I be listening to Lil Dirk Nim. I love Lil Dirk. I know y'all didn't know that about me, but that's my little dedication to all of my uh 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 girl. Why the what's that noise? Y'all thought that's my car. That's somebody behind me. Girl, they whole car making my car shake. But anyway, so let me see how far are we from so we're 13 minutes away i don't know why i thought we was going to be closer to um i don't know why i thought we would be closer to the outlet but that's okay um to be very excuse me girls but to be very honest with y'all it's a little bit after three like literally 301 but the bottom line is this it really don't matter what time it is in houston because it's always gonna be traffic no matter what i thought i was about to have a whole conversation with y'all but guys i'm gonna i'm actually gonna have to concentrate because i don't i'm not familiar with this side of town and uh baby they likes the big boy over here and i can't talk my shit the way i likes to because I don't kind of know this territory, so let me concentrate and I'ma call y'all back. Y'all, real quick, I know my hair looking crazy, but I didn't have to walk a goddamn green mile trying to find this room. But I had to tell y'all this real quick. What hospital this is? North Cypress. Baby, North Cypress. The men's is down to the North Cypress. If y'all want to meet some men's, I just met a man. I ain't gonna call him, but he did give me his number. He had said, call him, girl. And y'all, he the director of supply chain and procurement. Ooh, blue. So why you ain't gonna come? Go to sleep, week. 
Cause baby, I seen something uh gold on that old finger. Uh, I seen something gold, baby, and it wasn't his teeth. Okay. Oh, now she's trying to be fucked like a cigar. Show up my diamonds like a sign by the rock. Ain't pushing out his baby telly by the rock. Hey, yo, I've been on. Bitch, you been caught. Bentley tins on. Fendi pins on. I mean, I've been stoned. X-Men been stoned. He keep on telling Nikki. Y'all, I'm over here laughing and crying at the same time. Oh, my God. Y'all, stay off of TikTok. I'm going to tell you why. Stay off of TikTok because TikTok going to have your emotions all over the place. Okay, so I goes now. <laughs> <laughs> I goes down to TikTok and this is what I see. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'ma show y'all. I'm gonna have to yeah, I'm just gonna put it on the screen, girl. I'm gonna have to save it. But anyway, uh-uh, baby, what is you doing? But anyway, girl, so I'm minding my business or whatever. I go down to TikTok and I see Anita Baker, but what made me what make it so sad is them playing the song My Angel. Okay. So I just immediately was like, I don't know. I think I like I immediately know like it was so many, you know, of our aunties and mamas and grandmamas down, <laughs> down to the Anita Baker concert in Atlanta this weekend and she didn't show up and they was mad cussing that lady out, calling her bow head and everything else. And it was like when I seen that picture of her, I was like, man, like sometimes we you know, it's just important that we give people that we give people grace or whatever so i don't know it just made me feel like it just kind of made me feel sad but then girl something told me to click on them comments baby when i went down to the comment section y'all i don't know if you girls have ever felt like you wanted you felt like you was crying and laughing at the same time that's how i feel right now i literally feel like crying and laughing not laughing at how anita baker look but how how they eating up <laughs> girl they eating her up in them comments in that comment section they eat the girls is eating her up i'm pissed anita ball-headed ass they canceled the concert so before i see something told me something told me just to mind my business and just keep listening to t.s madison so uh, I was down here listening to T.S. Madison. Y'all, y'all remember when y'all was little kids? Like, when y'all, when I was in the fifth grade. Like, okay, so listening to T.S. Madison remind me, it just made me feel like when I would overhear my mom and my aunt and my mom and her friends, like, talking and stuff. Girl, y'all, they used to be talking about men and stuff like that or whatever. And I used to be sneaking and listening, girl. So, y'all, I would literally go to school the next day and be acting like you know be talking like my mom when they were like i was grown girl y'all it was a trip so i kind of felt i don't know i kind of felt like listening to t.s madison i was like baby this this remind me of how my mama used to be talking oh y'all the fine dad is just back down to the thing girl let me see baby the fine dad is just back out here y'all remember last summer the fine dad is was down here but anyway, girls, let me get situated. I'm about to pull up to the house. Let me get situated and I'll call you girls back. So what I want to know is to all of my Gen X girlies, did your parents leave you at home <laughs> when you were young or did your mom leave you at home? girl my mom used to leave us at home and it just was not a big deal you know what i'm saying like it was three of us and we are pretty much stair steppers like um you know like when my older sister was three my middle sister was two and i was one so anyway it was always the three of us so yes my mom used to leave us at home it just everyone in the neighborhood uh, parents used to leave them at home but the rule that my mom had was kind of like you know basically don't be telling all of the the family business you know don't be out i mean don't you know basically like don't be outside and you know don't be telling people that we at home by ourselves and stuff just for safety reasons and times are just different now you know um 
But I think in Texas, if I'm not mistaken, you can start leaving your kids at home, I want to say like at 10. But I think that honestly, if your kids are responsible, it's just not that big of a deal. But what I will say is this, and I think um, this might be where a lot of my expectations and standards come from. Um, my mom typically didn't date around. She didn't do all of that. She would be in very long-term relationships. Uh, but basically, my mom would take us on dates with her. You know, so that's why I be telling people, baby, I've been dating since I was eight years old because uh, she wasn't, you know, always just trying to leave us at the house. And so once she got serious with somebody, baby, we'll be sitting up wherever they were sitting up eating whatever they was eating or whatever. But uh, yeah, I mean, and of course, if they had their own, wanted to have their own separate date night, girl, yeah, my mama will be leaving us at home. And then she'll bring us some donuts and stuff. And so it just wasn't a big deal. And so I think now, I think it really is contingent upon the maturity of your kids. You know, if your kids are, you know, 13, whatever, I, I, and I'm not saying leave them at home to... <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know cuz I don't I be kind of trying to be careful when I say stuff about uh parents cuz I'm not a parent, but I would just think that if your kids are mature enough and you want to go on a date night with your boo or with your husband, you know, go. As long as you're not leaving the kids at the at the house for a whole week by themselves and you know, I don't think that's a big deal. Now, of course, when they get in high school, shit, all bets off, baby, please. Once they get in high school, especially if it's the summertime, girl, I be gone. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all will probably be talking about me as a mama because I, I feel like, shit, if I had a 17-year-old, we'll just say like a 15-year-old or 17-year-old and the summer came, I probably have somebody coming and checking on them or whatever, but girl, I be gone. I wouldn't... <laughs> Oh my y'all, is that bad? Is that bad? I don't think that's bad. But again, I am like the, you know, like me and my sister, we're like the cool aunts. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm the Amy. Like if my little niece went to the mall with me, and my little niece is gorgeous, you know, and I ain't gonna lie, them little boys, they would be on her. And as long as they was respectful and wasn't like trying to touch all on her and stuff, if a little boy came up to her, um, I would just, I, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, don't talk to her. I was never that type of aunt or whatever. So I don't know. Maybe I would be the cool mom or whatever. Um, you know, you set your rules. Of course, you wouldn't be able to have a party or anything at the house. But yeah, girl, please. Because think about it. If you have a 17-year-old, more than likely, girl, they're going to be going off to college soon. You know, so you're going to have to leave them or, you know, leave them to their own devices anyway once you drop them off at college, especially if they're going out of college out of state and say you, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, so I don't think it's a big deal. Y'all weigh in in the comment section. Tell me, um, do you girls leave your kids at home, especially if they are of age, uh, you know, is that something people still do this day and age? Cause it's just it's just not a big deal, girl. It's it's just not. I don't even know why that conversation came up. But this one lady, she was saying like her mom and dad, they've been leaving her at home since <laughs> Yeah. She said they've been leaving her at home since she was eight years old. So she would just like microwave her uh her little meals and stuff. You know, she knew all of the rules and stuff, and she just knew how to, like, take care of herself. Oh, and I forgot to tell y'all this, guys. I was also a latchkey kid. And so, um, you know, being that I was the youngest one, I would get out of school before my, my sisters. So I would have to go home from school and let myself in and all of that kind of stuff, and it just was not a big deal. 
um me and my sister was talking the other day she's doing better by the way so she's y'all she out of the hospital and everything but we was talking the other day and so she was just saying like um we were talking about our childhood and she was just saying like she wished that you know we would have done a lot of you know like more stuff like you know and i was like well i don't remember it like that because i didn't like doing stuff because she was just saying like you know my mom would take us to the mall a lot y'all we literally <laughs> y'all every weekend we was at the galleria when i was a kid i'm talking about i felt i'm like shit we just ought to move here because that's how much we would be at the galleria every weekend but anyway i was telling my sister like i didn't like doing stuff at as a kid i mean y'all as a kid all i wanted to do was like look pretty lay in a bed and read books literally that was it like i would just or and watch beauty pageants because that was like my favorite fa <clears throat> favorite favorite thing in the world was to watch beauty pageants or to watch the dallas cowboy chili because y'all they used to have a dallas cowboy chili the movie and girl like i would be trying to watch the movie every time it came on so that's all i wanted to do you know what i'm saying like just like be pretty lay in the bed um read my books or lay in the bed <laughs> watch beauty pageants or watch the dallas cowboy chili just like if you know if my mom just would have just let me do that my entire childhood i would have been perfectly fine with that so it's just crazy how you can grow up with like two siblings and we're completely different like y'all my sisters are extroverts you know and i was always an introvert they learned how to drive at a normal age and so of course they would have to like drive me around and <laughs> they would have to drive me around and then um i didn't like my mom i don't know y'all my mom like never made me cook it was like everything she never i never really now that i'm looking back like i was never really made to like do anything my only job was to do well in school and so um they would have to drive me around they would have to cook for me <laughs> y'all they would have to cook for me and then i mean i had like some little chores and stuff like that but it was nothing like them you know what i'm saying or whatever but i just remember like one thing i can say is like they never complained they was never like why rochelle don't have to do it like they never i guess they was just used to that and then um girl y'all when i got older my mama had just one day she just confided in me and she was like you know she was saying that she regrets that she didn't make me like learn how to cook and she regretted like me not having to drive and stuff y'all i did not learn how to drive till i was like 24 years old which is why you know i just i just wait a minute what was i 24 hold on let me think no i think i was was i older oh no girl i was older than that y'all I don't think I learned, I did learn how to drive right before I turned. Did I, well, how old was I? Oh my God, guys, I wasn't, I can say that I did learn how to drive before I turned 30. I can tell you that, but it was before 30, but definitely after, uh, definitely after 25. So I didn't learn how to drive until my late, late twenties and one of my friends taught me how to drive girl so yeah um but yeah i kind of grew up just very very like sheltered and stuff like that and it just i don't know I, i've always been an introvert I, I talk about that a lot you girls know that so i never really you know liked doing like too too much stuff and then when i got to college i went to pv and baby i had lost my little introverted shell for a while you know because being in college and stuff you kind of get out and you go to parties and stuff like that but anyway girl i don't even know how we got down this rabbit hole but 
uh, for all of my girls, like if you guys have like curly wigs and stuff like that, and you really want to start wearing your wigs for the summertime girls, all I'm doing is just basically, let me see if I can find a piece. Just taking a piece like this, I'm gonna comb this piece out. And then, you just comb a piece out like this. Ooh, goodness, okay. And then I'm taking some conditioner, just this conditioner that I bought from Ross, and I'm just putting it on my hair all the way down to the end, and I'm literally just twisting it like this. And I'm doing, you know, I'm probably just gonna go through and do a few more pieces and then when I take it off tonight, I'm just gonna put it on the wig head to dry. And that's it and then that's how you get those really pretty like hydrated curls because this Houston heat will dry your hair out. Uh, and then also girls, y'all Houston is, is not, if you come into Houston sis, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, Houston is not the place where you wanna come and think you're gonna take a shower at night. Okay, I'm gonna take a shower before I get into bed. Then I'm gonna get up and then I'm gonna go do this. No, no, no. In my Cat Williams spirit, no, no, no. Houston is absolutely the city where you're gonna, if you shower at night and if you're gonna go out the next morning and do stuff, run errands, whatever it is that you're gonna do and you're gonna be out more than two hours, you need to pre-shower. You need to pre-shower. I'm letting you know now. You will, Houston is a two shower city. Houston is not the city where you can be out in the summertime more than two hours and come home and take off your cute little outfit and put on your jammies and get in the bed. No, 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 no. You don't want to do that. You come out like, <laughs> when I get off the phone with y'all, I'm absolutely positively going to uh, get in the shower. I was not out that long, but I was out a little bit longer than two hours. And baby, baby, uh, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm not sweaty or anything like that, but you know, the sun, that, that sun baking into your skin, you know what I'm saying? Baking into your face and baking into your neck. And then, you know what I'm saying? All that bacon, you gonna fuck around and be smelling like bacon. And the bombshells, we don't smell like bacon when we go to bed, baby. <laughs> baby, we don't be smelling like bacon when we go to bed. But anyway, y'all, so I think I showed y'all this wig in the last video. This wig is from... uh sue bella hair i haven't edited the video the hair video yet but baby this is another showstopper now this is another um this is another man eater wig the men's was on me again today girl oh my god y'all okay i've been talking for a minute y'all let me finish this wig and get like take me a shower and stuff and i'm gonna probably call y'all back when i get in the bed